In this video, we are talking about vertical slice architecture, from when to use it to how to use it. But the first question to answer is, why do you need vertical slice architecture? So let's start by talking about which pain we are trying to address with vertical slice architecture. We all know diagrams like this. This is a typical representation of something like clean architecture. And an architecture like this one has a cost associated. The typical flow of a request in an architecture like this is something like this. The API will receive the request, will forward it to the use cases, application services. It may interact with domain and then it may go to the infrastructure. You have a round trip to back and reply. And this might be an elegant architecture, but sometimes it imposes a given cost. As an example, imagine that you onboard someone in your team, someone inexperienced. Typically, when you assign the first task, someone will sit down with that person and try to describe the system. And if we don't do that work of describing how the system works, if that person doesn't read anything, it might come up with a solution with something like this. According to the principles of clean architecture, this might be wrong. However, let's face it, if it's a simple query to the database, why not doing this? It's a perfectly valid argument. And the same happens when you try to implement in your architecture something like CQRS. And when inside of the same projects, inside of the same solution, you have a side for commands and other for the queries, things don't align with those layers that we have just seen. And if you try to implement those queries inside of the command structure, you will notice that things will not be as efficient as they should be. And after a while working on this solution, bringing more features into it, and this application keeps growing, you will notice that often you, your team will be working on the same files because you may group things into repositories for a given type or, for example, application services that will add or approve or cancel orders, for example. And that will be an extra concern when you are merging source code from those multiple developers. Not only that, but you are adding a new feature by changing existing files. And if you change them and you don't have proper testing in place, the risk is quite high. So if you are feeling and living one of those painful things that I just described, likely vertical slice architecture is one good option for you. It's worth exploring. So let's see what it is. I would say that the vertical slice architecture is the concept of package by feature with some extra things on top. As far as I know, this concept was first introduced by Jimmy Bogart at an NDC conference. I will link that talk in the description. On that talk, Jimmy introduces to this way of organizing an application. Vertical slice architecture applies to an application and not to a system as a whole. And in the way that Jimmy describes this system, it's basically two main components. One approach to organize your files and one approach to handle your requests. And let me show you how you do it. And by the way, if you want to grab the source code of this project, you can do it as a patron. Vertical Slice Architecture is a tailored approach based on the request needs. And you do that because you consider that often requests need to be handled differently. So you will look into your requests and you will group by that instead of grouping by technical concerns or to horizontal layers. And that grouping is what we call a slice. In other words, we will favor coupling through that slice instead of through a layer. And how do we come up with those layers? We will need to model our system around axes of change. In other words, we will slice it through features, domain concepts, aggregation routes, bounded contexts, you name it. You will find the things that typically change together. Because one of the goals of this approach is that rarely you will be changing existing software. You will be adding new features without needing to touch code that is fulfilling a different feature. This template is handling a scenario of task management, where we will have our to-dos, each to-do item that needs to be fulfilled. A to-do item might be part of a given project and the project might be assigned to a given area, an area of our life, like personal, professional, things like that. Those three big domain concepts inside of our application might be the first level of the slice. So the way that I see it, we might have a, a big slice that inside has multiple minor slices, let's say. If you don't have a lot of features, you may avoid this first level of grouping that I'm having here. And inside of those three areas, we will see three different approaches to vertical slice architecture. Let's start by the to-dos. Here you will find three different features, the complete, create, and get. 
Each of those features needs to be independent of each other. However, you will notice that I have here a domain and also an infrastructure project. What does this mean? Vertical slice architecture can live together with other types of architectures. You may be doing clean architecture inside of a given slice. You might be doing hexagonal on another one. You might be accessing directly to a database in another one. That's one of the big benefits of this approach. Inside this file, the setup file, you can find two methods that will be invoked in the program.cs. So in the program.cs, we'll be calling these methods to configure this slice. The slice should be able to configure to itself. As I told you moments ago, vertical slice architecture is not only how to organize files, but also how to handle requests. One thing that Jimmy talks about that makes a lot of sense is that every single request is always an input, a black box and an output, a request, a black box and a response, or for example, a query, a black box and a response. And when you look into the systems this way, you know that that black box can be anything. It can be organized as you wish. It might implement different patterns. It might be following DDT. It might be following clean architecture. It doesn't matter. And that is one of the goals of this approach. So on this slice, you will find that I decided to create an handler, a request. I don't have a response for this type of request, and also an endpoint. This endpoint is responsible to map this entry point into the API. And if we look here into another feature, we will see that on this case, we have the endpoint, the handler, a query, and a response. So it's always the same pattern. And what will change is always the implementation of the handler. One of the things that Jimmy advocates is that you should implement the handler in the dirtiest way as possible. And then you keep refactoring it to improve your design. And during that refactoring, you may push things into a domain layer, like the one that I have here. You may extract something like the infrastructure. It's up to you. If we visit projects, we'll see that now our slices are organized in a different way. The organization of those slices doesn't impose folder, doesn't impose a project, doesn't impose a file. A slice might be any of those things. It's up to you. At a given moment, you can move a slice from a file into multiple files inside of a folder. You may decide to move that folder into another project that you will extract and you install that dependency. It's completely up to you. So on this approach, I have two slices, the archive project and the create project. And here I'm doing something in the way that Jimmy does, that is using Mediator to orchestrate those handlers. One of the advantages of using Mediator is that if you find common code like middlewares and things like that, you can easily create a pipeline with Mediator, so you can do that. However, don't get me wrong, vertical slice architecture doesn't imply Mediator. So inside of the create project file that is one of my slices, you can see that I have here a class that has subclasses, for example, a common handler with, that implements the interface of iRequestHandler, my mediator. And also I have here my command and the mapping of my endpoint. So this file is the complete implementation of a feature inside of my system. So the difference from this one to the previous one is that on this one, I'm using one file per feature is self-contained in, in a file, and I don't have things like a domain, for example. If you visit the areas folder, you will see a, an approach that is quite similar to this one. I'm grouping inside of files, but on this case, I'm not depending on Mediator, because the reality is that you don't need Mediator, as I told you. One thing that is important to say is that in this case, I'm building an API. And as you can see, I'm mapping the endpoint of the API together with that slice. If you are building an MVC application, for example, and you have those files for Razor Pages, for example, those files should live together with the rest of the slice. Now it should be clear to you why Vertical Slice Architecture has a good relationship with CQRS. The feature of the query doesn't need to follow the same structure as the feature of the command. So on the command, I can go through a complex pipeline to handle that request, and I can shortcut that implementation in the query side. And two queries don't need to be implemented in the same way. All of that because each request might be implemented in completely different ways. What leads to the advantage that, for example, if I'm adding the feature of create a project, I'm adding a new file or a new folder with a set of files into the system. So the risk of having a merge conflict is quite low 
the risk of breaking existing things is also quite low. So it's an architecture that favors the evolution in terms of adding new things into the system. And also that inexperienced developer that we talked about in the beginning of the video will be quite productive in architecture like this one because it just needs to bring new artifacts, new files, new folder and do the obvious thing. It doesn't need to look around for how it should be doing things inside of this project. And what about tests? Testing with vertical slice architecture will favor tests that will look into the slice as a black box. Since this approach doesn't impose a lot of abstractions, that is one of the things that often people will be looking for when doing something like this, you will often test against the real resources. What does that mean is that you will be doing a lot of integration tests instead of unit tests. Unless you are implementing a feature and you extract a domain model and then you can unit test that domain model and use integration tests for the handlers itself. Should you be using vertical slice architecture? It depends. Is it better? No, it's different. On my opinion, it's a good way if you need to mix and match different approaches inside of your system. Or if due to the inexperience of your team, you are looking for a way that will speed the development cycle. However, let me say that there are some things that I would be concerned. The lack of consistency across the features is something that concerns me because one day you need to do maintenance on something that exists, you need to address a bug, and you will find so many different styles of implementation that um, likely it will not pay off. It will also be difficult to keep an end on duplication. But one of the worst ones for me, according to my typical workflow, is the fact that most of those tests will be long running tests. We'll be doing integration tests more than unit tests. And as someone that practices TDD, this is not that friendly to me. So let me know what do you think about vertical slice architecture. If there's any other thing that you'd like to see me exploring, if you still have any doubt. And before you go, just one last tip. Make sure you watch this video right here. You will like it for sure.